hear it. Let's go. <clears throat> I see you've been practicing. What's up, you purple dandelions? Please don't swear. This is gonna be a very short episode. <laughs> right. And... <laughs> Today we are looking at the creepiest things that have happened to you in real life. Oh, babe, I'm freaked out. This should be exciting. I love spoops. And it some, is spooktober. Some creeps, some gaffs, some... Hey! <laughs> Please... Please keep it down. Hey. All right. The first one. The first creepy creep. The first creepy thing that happened was Amanda Kenberg. And Yo, she says, what it is, Amanda. some guy followed me around at the gym, followed me outside. When I was about to get into my car, he stopped me to tell me I was pretty. And I said, thanks, but maybe you shouldn't follow people around like you were. He just stared at me until I got in my car and left. People are creepy. It would be pretty creepy. Yeah. You followed all night and then did that. To be like, to reject them and be like, please don't follow me around. So, and yeah, I'll, exactly. It's I was gonna say creepy. like, like it is creepy to do that and don't do that if you're anybody. <laughs> but like, I could see maybe he was just really nervous. Right. And he didn't, well, maybe wasn't aware that he was like following her around and then he was like, okay, she's leaving. I have to go say something. So he follows her outside and he's like, hey, I just wanted to let you know you're really pretty and blah, blah, blah. But then like when she says, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Then he's just like, but I have. And stares at her <laughs> until she leaves. But I've already done it. That's <laughs> creepy. Yeah. That's the creepy part for me. His anyways. psych just split at that moment. He was deciding whether or not, he's like, do I become a serial killer? I know, or right? Do I, <laughs> do I dwell in my own pity? Do I let her go or do I kill her? I, I, I mean, we've met Amanda. I think she could have taken him. Yeah. Ken Bird for a reason, baby. Right. <laughs> Blake Nathan Milton says, I was once home alone mid coitus oh. with a female friend a while ago and during it we heard three distinct knocks on the door. So I quickly hopped up and chucked pants on and looked outside the door to see nobody there. I checked around the house, <clears throat> hence hearing footsteps and I ended up finding nothing. To this day, still creeps me out. All right, but why? How come every time there's a retelling of a creepy thing, there's it's always like there was three distinct knocks. knocks. Like there was this distinct or this very like ominous. It's you probably like, just got ding dong ditch. I don't you know. You say footsteps, there. but that could sound like a lot of things. Yeah, you were having coitus. Yeah, it could have been your coitus. Maybe your coitus, your balls smacking, <laughs> were echoing from the other room. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like you walked into the other room and it was trapped. And you're like, <laughs> uh, Katie Rose Walters says. I had a dream that my mom hid my dead family member's body inside a mattress and my other family members slept on top of it. Then, all of a sudden, the corpse started breathing and twitching but still never opened its eyes or anything. It was pretty vivid. Or vivid. That's also used a lot. What? The, the word vivid. Vivid oh, and distinct. I was like, did I say it wrong? <laughs> no, no, you're good. No. Okay. What did I do? Uh, now, that would be creepy. I mean, that was like, I mean, yeah, like American Horror Story Hotel. Just a dream, though. Like, I've had some messed up dreams. Right. I guess I was time. thinking if that was if that was a literal scenario, like actually hiding a body in a yeah. mattress. Like could you imagine like, oh I stayed at this hotel and it turned there out was, that there was bodies in the mattresses. There was this story that I had heard back when I was a kid mm -hmm. and there was a teenage boy who was like stalking this younger girl. Like she was probably like nine or ten. Oh cool. And he was like probably sixteen, seventeen. Uh-huh. And I don't know how it happened or how this like the event carried on, but he ended up killing her with like a baseball bat. Oh my God. And then he hid her under his bed, like under the mattress. And the mom found it like three weeks later because of how rancid the smell was. So like this, this kid literally was sleeping like on her dead. Like how could you, you know what I'm saying? Like, how could you as a person sleep oh on a dead God. body it's for- one you murdered. Yeah, for like three weeks. And then the mom like, imagine being the mom right. to walk in there and be well, like- And to like oh. never try to deal with it. Like, yeah. you're just like, yeah, it's just gonna sit. I'm just gonna put that there and it'll be fine and yeah. forever. <laughs> like, yeah, you, things I'm, don't decompose gonna, yeah. and stink really badly. Like, Or like, even if they did, like when you move, like they're just yeah. gonna- like you're gonna move your bed by yourself and avoid this whole situation Seriously. for the rest of your life. I, I'm well. He for sure yeah. has some, oh, yeah, some problem. You just throw some lie on the body. Yeah, the amateur. <laughs> yeah, amateur. Aaron Nichols says, "I was at a concert one time a few years ago. In the middle of a band set, I feel this pain on my shoulder. I turn my head to see what it is, and there is an old creepy-looking dude chomping on my shoulder. 
Left a mark, but didn't break the skin, thankfully. Weird as hell. Well, did you say Beetlejuice three times? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what concert were you at, yeah. exactly? What the, like, yeah, what the fuck? What? <laughs> it was like a dick ass. What was that band called? Blood on the Dance Floor? And Blood you, on like, the Dance you, Floor. You were young and there was a predator who was like, what do you, like, what do you mean? That's why I come here. Like, yeah. that's, that's what we do. We nibble on kids here. That's interesting. God. I'm assuming drugs probably had something to do with that. Just imagine Maybe. that reaction. Just oh, like, I would, to, I like, would just, this, like, like, if I turn and look and saw a man oh, I'm right swinging. here, like, Sucking dude, I am me? just, I am, my oh, elbow yeah. is going right up his nose. Dude, like, yeah, I was thinking, like, a hand, just, like, yeah. just take him to hell. Because it's, it's, like, one thing if they're, like, pushing or moshing or whatever, but a dude just, like, yeah. you don't even know. Yeah, like, you just could get biting your shoulder. Or something. Oh, right. I would, fist would yeah. fly so fast. Also, like, I've seen enough movies to feel like I'm justified to be like, the dude was chewing on me, thought he was a zombie, it freaked out. Yeah. I punched him in the nose. What do yeah. you want? Well, that's assault. Yeah, he had bit me. What do you want? He assaulted you, so. That's fucked up. That is creepy. Uh... Ellen Leroy, LaRue. Uh, LaCroix. Ellen <laughs> LaCroix says, I had an electronic toy like a Furby type thing that used to laugh when the belly was pressed. Had it for many years, and as and well as they do, the batteries died, so it just sat there, and one night when my partner and myself went to sleep, we got woken up at 3 a.m. to a demonic laughter. Traced it back to a box that I kept the toy in. Lo and behold, it kept laughing and laughing, so I did what any person would do and smashed it to bits with a sledgehammer. It would be really creepy if, like, mm. after you smashed it, it, it kept, kept laughing. Going. That would be like, okay, we need to move. <clears throat> have you had a Furby incident before? I had one once. It was they didn't have batteries in. There was something just wrong with those fucking toys. They were creepy as shit. Cause yeah. they, they had like three different ones, and they all were like similar to that. Like they didn't have batteries in them, or like the batteries had been, you know, it's been in the room for like ten years or something. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you'll just hear it turn on, and it was creepy because a lot of them would get personal and they'd like record your your name if you they like ask you. And so <laughs> just imagine that from your closet in the middle of the night. It's just dead and night, and you just hear, ah, ha, ha, ha. what are you doing, Austin? Oh my god, like, dude. I would lose it. Ah! I would lose it. Just jump out the fucking window. That's, yeah, oh my god. That's scary. Defective toys. Not a good toy. Weston Merritt said, I heard a female yell for help out behind our house in the woods and saw an old man with a cane about a half hour later walking to the road. Yeah, I want more information on that. Like, yeah, seriously. Like, would you, was there a body found? Like, maybe, did somebody go missing? Like, well, happened? an old man, too. Like, how old? Yeah. Like, 50s or, like, 80s? Right. And what, you know, uh, like, what kind of old man goes on a midnight walk, like, through the woods? Right. Like, that's pretty... I mean, it seems like a pretty likely target to get murdered. What I imagine... Unless they're doing something creepy. Well, the innocent story to this mm -hmm. would be if he was just, like walking and then this other random woman saw him and just freaked out and right. screamed and Maybe ran she away. she was jogging and wasn't expecting to see anybody or Yeah, something. exactly. And, just, and like, how much in the woods is this? Right. Like, it is definitely creepy to like, and how like, it would just, because your brain will put together that connection so you hear yeah. a scream and then you see an old man you're like, uh oh. Yeah, like, what happened? You've seen the worst. And right. the cane, like, how, how cane was it? Like, was he just, he just had a cane and he was stressed? Like, how cane Or, or was he was it? like, oh, Yeah, like, exactly. Like, like, you know, how, how likely was he to have Done killed something. this woman and then immediately been walking through your yard. Right. Connor Jordan says, a high school aged guy pulled his dick out in front of me when I was like seven or eight. Yeah, it's all good. It looked like a triangle, so I win. A tri- I've never heard of dick and balls. Look like a triangle. Yeah, I've never yeah. heard that description. That's, like a Dorito Yeah, cock. that's really bad. <laughs> like pointy dick or like, so he's probably like uncircumcised. I'm thinking small or, pointy, maybe? like. Just like a tiny uncircumcised yeah. dick. It's just like a tootsie, or what are they called, a kiss? A Hershey kiss? A Hershey kiss, <laughs> yeah. oh no. Oh man. And that's fully erect. Damn. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's rough. That's that is creepy. That's pedophile. pretty creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, sorry about that. Yeah. You didn't talk to anybody. That's lame. You should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Joseph says, I was with my friend and we were hungry, so I decided to buy dinner at Taco Bell for us. When we sat down to eat, an old guy with cataracts sat down behind us and started talking to himself. He was having an entire conversation with himself and started talking about how he was burying his dead parents in the woods. He quickly hopped in the car and finished, we quickly hopped in the car and finished our food at his house. The homeless guy's house. <laughs> they were at the other day, <laughs> the friend's house. Yeah, that, I mean, I there's I, yeah, yeah. a Especially, lot of people yeah. like talk mm -hmm. to themselves, like, you know, it's hard to be. Happens. It's hard to be like, oh, I'm sure you're just crazy. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. Like, what if he did? What right, if he yeah, did? Exactly. But he's like, now because of that, he's crazier. We have to And is just like him. tattling on himself, but nobody will listen. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, it's like, please, I need to tell somebody. Exactly, like, yeah. I killed my 
My family. Yeah, They're well, dead. They're buried. Nobody will listen to me, but there's a dead family rotting in the house down yeah, there. Like, oh, please, I'm, somebody. Fu- I'm fucking sure. Yeah, right. He's <laughs> just crazy. Please, it doing stinks. Math. Scott Sirkman says, During my fifth grade year, I used to go to my grandma's house in the morning for breakfast and leave on the bus. One morning as I was eating breakfast and talking to my grandma, who at the time was wheelchair bound, her eyes rolled back and she stood up tall, looked down at me and yelled in the most menacing and demonic voice, let me take a moment to talk about work. You fuck. You fucking asshole. <laughs> I was getting into that story. After that, I realized that my soul been stolen my George left night and kept in Danny Beers. You fucking, <laughs> you fucking, you got me. That was me. a good bait. You got me. That was a really good yeah. bait. I like the commit because you had like eight lines. So I was like, yeah. I would never once thought it was going to be a joke. And I was Jesus like, Jesus Christ. And then in the demonic voice said, let me take a moment. Oh my, if I do <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Russell Corio says, oh shit, okay. Like, oh shit. Oh shit. Okay, so my buddies and I were at Flagship really late because car guys do that for some reason, and this coked up homeless lady came up to us and started talking to us about how she's on these different drugs and how she just got out of jail. Tight. Then after moments of awkward silence, she asked me for a ride back home. I shit you not, two of my friends just walked away, leaving me there with her and all the cars, and I had to hide my keys and tell her I Ubered there. My friends suck sometimes. Yeah, what if they saw the news you died, like, because you got, like, scared into giving this old woman a ride and she fucking killed you? Yeah. Well, good friend. Why would they not stick with you? I think that's more of an uncomfortable story than a creepy story. Because that would make yeah. me feel, I wouldn't make me creeped out, but that would make me feel very uncomfortable. Just like, right. mm, no, I'm Yeah, I guess like, if I had pursued and like the story went like, so I gave her a ride. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I guess and I then she here. just disappeared out of my car. <laughs> Dude, we went to the, shit. I dropped her off somewhere and it turns out she's a zombie. All right, Tyler Ditlow says, this was a while back. I was meeting with this girl for the first time. I get to her college and can't find her for 20 minutes. She comes out and barely says a word. We go to Wawa and she's still not saying anything. Awkward. Really on the drive back, she grabs my phone and just throws on whatever she wants to listen to. We get back and go up to her room and sit down to watch Moana, and she gets all cuddly and close. After a while, I get up to leave, and she throws herself on top of me, screaming, You can't leave. When I finally got free and went to walk out the door, she looked at me and said, Leaving without a goodbye kiss? I blocked her on everything as soon as I got in the car and hightailed it out of there. Yeah, that's a, that's some, you know what? Yeah, it sounds like she was incredibly awkward, and then like sh- she was, she tried to do something cute, like no, you can't leave, uh, but it just was, came across very creepy because yeah. of how awkward she was. <laughs> yeah, the, the way she's like, no, you can't, you can't leave, and she's like, oh shit, that was really right. awkward. Well, I ended to say like nothing for like the whole hangout, and then to just be like, you're leaving. Yeah, like, I know. Like what the? F-? Like it was like, don't leave before the ritual. Like, yeah, exactly. That's what it sounds like to me. Exactly, like, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go. No goodbye kiss. And like, yeah. uh, you're gonna poison me. I'm fucking <laughs> out of here. Uh, yeah, I'd freak out too, probably. I've yeah. seen way too many horror movies. For real. No, not a word. Yeah, that's so weird. That's what was like immediately red flag. Like I get being awkward, but to be like, to, to say absolutely nothing and then to just grab their phone and be like, like it's just like a scary thing to go through it. Like what? It, I don't know. Creepy yeah. stuff. Like see if anybody was like knows that you know they're by like they're out there by themselves or something like, yeah any number of creepy things or getting like personal information maybe yeah but, oof Jaden Van Stee says on Instagram I was stalked by this really old guy who thought I was a teenage girl <laughs> he was desperately trying to get nudes from me and that happens all the time I feel like like did you have a computer when you were younger at all a little bit like chat rooms did you ever get like I never was allowed into creepy? chat rooms oh gotcha no so yeah, I didn't I didn't really instances. ever do that no I Did you? Always, no, not me personally, but I had a lot of friends. Uh, my friend Ryan, he had a, a person ask for, they just wanted a picture of him in his socks. And it was like, it said it was a girl, but he was like, not sure. He said he said he took the picture and then deleted it and then never talked to her again. But it was like, almost in a naked picture of himself in just socks to this person. Damn. It was like, what well, could potentially have been like some predator or something. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah, probably, yeah, honestly. But for yeah, sure. Yeah, he definitely made a good choice of not doing it. But it was like, so, like, no girl is going to message a dude and be like, let me see you in your fucking socks. Yeah. Like, especially if, like a 15 year old. <laughs> like, right. what 15 year old is just like, yeah, let me see well, your socks. You never know. I guess that's true. You never know. Callan uh, Twamley? Tw- tw- Twamley. Twamley. Says, Had a guy come over to me and ask to use my lighter. Then when I gave it to him, he starts burning heroin on a spoon, then fills up a needle. In reaction to my shocked face, he just shrugged and said, you know how it is, bro, then walked away. Damn. I mean... <laughs> Again, I, uncomfortable. Never seen heroin in real life. Uncomfortable. Be, yeah. 
I don't know. For sure. I feel like it's a little creepy just because it's like, if somebody's willing to just light up heroin in front of you, like, I would immediately be like, well, this person has no fear of yeah, robbing yeah, me. Yeah, like, they got, they got nothing to lose. Yeah, this for. person just like tricked me into like lighting up. I would have for sure said no, like, and they know that. So it's like, yeah. he's clearly a little bit manipulative. I would have right. immediately been like, oh fuck, this dude's gonna try to stab me or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I guess the ending would have d disarmed me a lot. He walked away and said, you know how it is, bro. That yeah. just sounds like a harmless tweet here. Damn. Autumn Bol Spole says, guy said I had nice childbearing hips. Once I said I never want kids, he went off on me saying it's a woman's duty to the world. That's just a that's just a dick move. Like, I like can imagine that would be creepy though. If some dudes just strike. This is your like just like a, if he's like, aggressive yeah, with like it, coming yeah. at you and telling you like you have to bear babies. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god. Like, right. Like well, and like sir? the escalation of that is like you don't think you I'll put a baby in you like that can oh, go no. anywhere you know. Yeah. That definitely sounds scary. Yeah. For creepy sure. at least. But yeah, nice I, I wasn't there. Childbearing hips. Congrats on the hips. Yeah, at least you got the hips, I guess. <laughs> Santiago uh, Rosas says, I once predicted the death death date and cause of a friend's dog while I was drunk. Are you sure? Did you kill <laughs> yeah. the dog? I say, are you sure that you didn't make a plan to kill yeah, the dog? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to show him. I'll make him think I'm a fortune teller. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, if it did happen like that, then yeah. But it's also one of those things that like, I would be very suspicious if my friend, Predicted, like six months yeah. earlier, was like, "Your dog's gonna die September 1st. This, you know, like, okay, and then it does. It'd be like, "Hey, so did you fucking kill my dog?" <laughs> yeah, because... exactly. That would be my first uh, question. Especially while I was drunk, like, "Well, did you just get drunk again and then kill the dog?" You're like, "Oh, holy shit, I was right." <laughs> like, yeah. Blackout and go stomp a dog to death. Oh, that's sad. I shouldn't have said that. Oh no. <laughs> Moving Please on. Don't subscribe. Andy. Rubio says there was some sketchy guy running around my backyard at three in the morning. It went on for like three days. Dude would stop and stare at my window sometimes. Wait, he was running around your backyard at three in the morning and it went on for three days. Like but he kept ev coming back every Not, yeah. day for three days for so three every, days every night at three th in the morning. For was it three in the morning? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, apparently. Dude would stop and stare at. At my window sometimes. Yeah, that's creepy. That'd that, be real creepy. That sounds like drugs, probably. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, maybe he thinks he's, maybe he thinks he's helping you. <laughs> maybe he's like, I'm warding off spirits. And yeah, he's just right. Like, ah! I'm sure. <laughs> Running around here. Right. It's like in Sam Winchester or something. <laughs> he just, yeah, he's like, it's me, Dean. Yeah, right. <laughs> we got to protect you. High as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Griggs says, I managed to get a 45-year-old stalker when I was 17 working at Domino's. Started calling the store and using fake names to speak to me and finally came to a head when the other six foot six assistant manager threatened him in the car park one night after he showed up. Have you, yeah. <clears throat> So like you said, I managed to get an old stalker. <laughs> like, hell yeah! Like did, <laughs> did like it. did you like set him like you planned for that or he just was like calling it because he knew who you? I assumed yeah. he was calling because he knew you, that you were there. Yeah, exactly. And He's then the he showed guy. up, and the dude was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Yeah, yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, that's for, for sure. sure. Especially be calling. Yeah, especially as being a seventeen year old, like possibly yeah. not even driving. Like yeah. having this dude knowing where you work and your hours and yeah. calling for you. Like that's super I'd be like, scary. I'm not fucking leaving. Like he knows I'm working. He's gonna just come here and fucking pick me up or yeah, something. Yeah, for real. People are yeah, wild. God. Ugh, that gives me the creeps. That's Travis Yazzie says, where I'm from, we have these things called skinwalkers. They come out usually at it's night. A bold claim. Yeah, it is a bold claim. They come out usually at night and do some weird shit to people. One of my experiences was a while back, and, but one night I was chilling in my room and everyone else was asleep. I had my windows open because it was hot. This was during the summer. I am Native American and I heard two old people talking in Navajo. I was too scared to move, so I just listened. I didn't know what they were saying. After a few minutes, I heard footsteps on the roof. They were pacing back and forth. Then they stopped and got quiet. After a couple minutes, I heard something being poured into the gutter. Sounded like sand, but I don't know. Then I heard someone leap off the roof and hit the ground. It was a creepy night. Never found out what was in the gutter because we have our gutter connected to pipes that lead away from the house, so the water flows away. Yeah, yeah that sounds a lot creepy. Of, a lot man. of unanswered questions there. Yeah, seriously. A lot of these, I just wish that there was like some reveal of like. Oh, like what it was. Yeah, like like, like, like oh, it was just this. Yeah, but I, th I guess that's what makes it creepy. Right, is because know. you just don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? I guess revealing it would make it less creepy because you'd be right. like, oh, it was just. But slow if it was revealed to be something fucking like a creepy, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. The fuck that is. Yeah, I've I, yeah I've never. I mean, I've heard of skinwalkers like on Supernatural. Right. Yeah. But I don't know. I've never uh -huh. heard of that before. 
Very, I, yeah. I assume just like some type of like Wendigo, essentially, or something. Yeah, like that. or yeah. like a especially if it's in Navajo, like like, like, like maybe yeah, like war, a, I would imagine that yeah. it's some sort of yeah it takes this human shape, and that would make sense for the talking. Yeah, let us yeah. know in the comments below what a skinwalker is. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. a couple more. Hudson Essex says, "I was walking to the train station to go home from school, and I noticed a homeless guy begging. So I gave him like five bucks and kept walking." About three blocks later, I heard something behind me, and I turned around, and the same homeless guy was following me with a dead-eyed stare. So I started walking a bit faster, and he matched me. I kept walking for another few blocks, and every time I turned back, he was there. Then I seen a police officer walking down the street, and I ran up to him and asked for help. But when I turned around again, the homeless guy was gone. I saw on the news a week later that someone got followed home by a homeless guy, and he beat them almost to death and robbed them. Damn. Yeah, that's fucking... Whew. Good thing the cop was there. Yeah, for real. That's, that's wild. That's terrifying. Especially finding out, like, a week later that a homeless guy followed somebody home and beat him to death almost. Yeah. Like, that's that crazy. probably for sure was almost you. Yeah, God for damn. sure. That's scary. Those that's people, too, because it's like, if you're homeless and you become aware that you're like, oh, I have nothing to lose. I can yeah. do kind of anything. Like, what's the point? Like, what's the harm? Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to go to jail and get Well, warm. like, a lot, of, a lot of people like that want to go to jail. Right, yeah. Because so it's better than living on the street. Right, so they might as well risk it. Like, oh, either I get caught and I go to jail or I beat this guy up and take his money and I have money now. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, of course you're going to take it. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's scary. That's real scary. Wow. Last one. Connor Noy says, an old man was taking pictures of me walking around my neighborhood. When I confronted him, he hissed at me and drove away. I was 16. Hissed at you? Hissed at him. I can't tell if that's cringy or creepy. Yeah. Like, like, how, like what did the guy look like and what was the hiss? Like, was right. it like, some really, I'm imagining for some reason uh, a really fat dude with glasses, bald hair, like a goofy, like tight, like one of those jackets that's really loud when you move. Yeah. And then he's just like, <laughs> some, really, <laughs> some really shitty hiss. He's like, <laughs> or, do you or know, do you know, you watched the first Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah. The part where uh, Frodo exposes the ring and then the old oh, the, Bilbo yeah. reaches mm -hmm. for it and he goes oh, yeah. <laughs> and he lunges at him like really fast okay, and then yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm yeah, so sorry. That, that. that would be like the, <laughs> the creepy type oh, of yeah, kiss. Yeah, exactly. Like at him. Like, yeah, like, like teeth come out. Like <laughs> That would be creepy, yeah. Damn. Or just like some cloaked like old... Like, yeah, right. Oh my fucking God. Yeah. You just breathed death on me? My parents' house where I grew up for like 20 years, uh, we were at home, I was really young. Mm -hmm. I was probably six years old at the time, seven. And it was, it was late. I think we were watching a movie and we we're in the living room and watching a movie. It's probably about midnight. Mm -hmm. And you know where my parents live, like it's, right. it's out there in the woods, mm -hmm. like there's nothing out there, right? right? And they have this like circular driveway with, with a gate that's like right here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember there was a car that pulled like up to the gate because it obviously couldn't drive in because the gate was locked. And so we saw the lights mm -hmm. coming in like the window and my mom was like, look, what is that? And then it was like, just sat there for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And so we were kind of just sketched out a little bit. Right. We're like, what, what's going on? And then this, this we, my dad saw this dude start walking down our driveway. And mind yeah. you, at this point, it's after midnight. Right. There's no reason they should yeah. be there. And with our gate closed and locked, there's no reason they should be on our property. Yeah, exactly. And so he sees this person. So we turn off like the movie and like it's already really dark. So it's just really dark in there. And my dad like goes and grabs his gun and he like stands by the door. And this, we, we like close the blinds or whatever. And this, so this dude walks up to the door and he just knocks on the door and he doesn't say anything. He just like knocks a bunch on the door and my dad just stand there with his gun, like waiting to see if this dude's gonna try and break in, right. what, what's gonna happen. And he knocked once and then waited like a minute and knocked again. And then like, I think he knocked three or four times um, within like the course of like two minutes mm -hmm. and nobody answered and then he just like, went back up the driveway, got in his car and left, but it was really weird. Like, cause usually if like, cause yeah, my initial thought would be like, oh, maybe he needs help, but it's like- He calmly walked up and parked he, his yeah, car. Yeah, he, he like... parked his car and sat there for like five minutes. Right. And then he walked up and then very calmly and yeah. slowly walked up to the house. That's funny. Knocked and, and like, he wasn't like, hey, I need help. Like, mm -hmm. hey, is somebody in there? Please help me. He didn't, he wasn't like saying that. He was just like, it's like that's literally the alternate like 
version of the Strangers movie where they don't answer the door. Yeah. Because that was, like, in that movie, the only reason that those people killed them is because they were home. Yeah. It was, like, a random thing. So, like, that potentially could have been a creepy thing where, right. like, if somebody had been like, yeah, what? They would have been like, all right, let's move in or yeah, something. like. right. But the fact that nobody answered, they're probably like, well, maybe they're not home. Yeah. Like, moved on. Um, that would have been fucking... Could you imagine if you would, like... In, oh, breaking news, like, family, like, in Roy Walsh. Next door. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Seriously. <laughs> oh, God. Um, there was another time that was a little creepy. I was home, and my dad was at work. It was uh, also very late, because mm-hmm. yeah, he works nights. And we have a bunch of woods on the side of our house, and I heard, like, footsteps going through our woods. Like, it's our property, mm-hmm. but it's just woods, so, right. like doesn't really seem like anyone's property, but it is our property. Uh And so there's like footsteps, I'm thinking, well, maybe it's a deer, we get a lot of wildlife and stuff up there, and then I hear voices. There's like two guys like talking. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make out what they were saying because they were kind of just talking kind of quietly. But uh, yeah, then the next day we we saw there was a stolen car ditched up at our driveway. So they ditched the car in that private road and then they were just walking through our, Mm -hmm. our woods and then walked through and like, got to the road and like got picked up by somebody right but it was just like I was just standing outside like smoking a cigarette and I heard these two dudes just like walking probably less than 100 feet from our house mm-hmm. on our property and I was just like mm. yeah like, like what are they uh, trying to do right now what's going on here? but luckily nothing happened I just, I just remembered this story from I was on tour a little bit ago like probably three sessions ago or something like that and uh we were in like just outside of Washington like right at the border of like Idaho and Washington and we we're staying at a friend's house so our friend could get laid, and so we we all as uh, both of our bands went out to the vans and we're like, we'll sleep out here so you can you know fuck your lady, and uh, except for one guy, he didn't get the hint, and it was, it was really funny. <laughs> oh, no. We were like, we all went outside and we're like, hey man, you wanna you wanna come with us? And he's like, oh no, I think there's enough room. I'm just gonna stay in here. And we're like, no, like you wanna come out to the van with us? And he's like. Okay, and then he came out there and just grabbed his like blow up bed and then went back inside. We're like, you fucking idiot. No, no. Uh, anyway, beside the point. So we were out there and me and like three other dudes had stayed up like super late because we were really paranoid about the trailer and stuff because yeah. we didn't want anybody to fucking steal our shit. We were just like, you know, it was like one of the first earlier tours and uh, <laughs> we were hanging out over by this, uh, this like. We were parked in a parking lot, and then their house was over here. Mm-hmm. This parking lot was like a church or something, so it was like vacant. And so we had both our vans parked, and <clears throat> me and the, t- the three other dudes were sitting over by this bench. So we were like in the shadows, kind of, and like taking like a smoke break or whatever. And uh, these two dudes came like riding up in bikes and like started circling both of the vans. And uh, we had one of the doors, the side door, open because we were like I had our luggage in there, and we were kind of grabbing shit. And they were like, they came over and they like came up behind the trailer and they stopped and like looked inside the the open thing and they were like kind of like biking up to it. And then one dude like looked over at his friend and his friend like nodded to where we were. And then they both like strolled off and we're like, okay. And so we like got up and we were like kind of like, okay, we got to be like on our guard now. So we locked everything up and then we moved, we, we moved over to the vans more to be like more secure towards that in case we needed to wake everybody up. And like, 20 minutes later, those two dudes plus one other person came circling around for, behind where we were at the tables. Like they came behind where we, so that we would have had our backs turned to them. All three of them came around that corner and they were like, they didn't have their bikes anymore. They were like on foot and they were like, look, like looking around the corner and shit. And they never came back around. They just left after they noticed that we weren't there anymore. It was, dude, it was like, those dudes were sure were probably trying to jump us and take our shit. Like it was fucking scary. Like if, those, if those dudes had a gun, like they, you know, could have easily been like, oh, fucking, you know, but they probably had like physical weapons or something, but still, it's definitely a creepy ass scenario. And we're oh, like, yeah. bearing the weight, we're like, we can't let our shit get stolen, all the guys would be so disappointed. Damn. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a freaky moment. Yeah, there's some sketchy people out there, man. For real. Ugh. That sucks. <clears throat> at least well, my boy got laid. Yeah, at least your boy <laughs> got laid. You almost got laid out. Yo. Um, we have a, we have a um, ceremonial oh, yeah. uh, item. It's a plumbus. It's a plumbus. In honor of Jared trying out with a plumbus cyst. Yes. I got him a plumbus for his birthday. It's a, it's a gummy plumbus. It's, it's cherry plumbus. and peach flavor. So I figure what better to end this episode than to quietly suck a plumbus. Eat a plumbus. Yeah. We humbly invite you, cordially invite you, I rather, to enjoy in our mukbang. There's the plumbus right here. You guys wanna get real close and personal, maybe bust out a dish of your own. Plumbus. We're gonna enjoy this plumbus nice and nice and good. It smells light. good. Yeah, the aromas are quite. Do you want the herpes sack or the, the ball? 
Or um, the or the or the or the, or the dick. I've kind of been enjoying the tendrils personally. Mm. The tendrils are looking nice. The okay. little red boys. Ooh, taking a taking a nice little bite. Grab your own. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna lose so many subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>